Video opens with four individuals on separate screens. In clockwise order, Megan DiRienzo, a young white woman, Trevor Harker, a younger white man, an ASL interpreter, a middle-aged white woman, and Nancy Rourke, an older white woman. Nancy uses American Sign Language and the interpreter voices for her. Uh, hi everyone, uh, my name is Megan DiRienzo and I work for the Detroit Institute of Arts. Uh, the DIA is so excited to share this opportunity with all of you. This artist talk with Nancy Rourke and the art project you will create afterwards was made possible through the DIA's millage supported by Oakland County residents. The millage helps the DIA connect students with art through digital programs and also supports free admission to the museum, which I'll talk about at the end of this program today. Um, now it's my pleasure to introduce Nancy Rourke. Uh, Nancy Rourke is an artist who lives in Colorado. She creates paintings that explore and celebrate deaf culture. She visited Michigan a couple of years ago to create a mural with the students at the Michigan School for the Deaf. And we are so happy to welcome you back to Michigan virtually, Nancy. And thank you so much for being here. Nancy signing. Thank you so much for inviting me. It is an, uh, a pleasure to meet all of you. Great. Um, so my first question for you, Nancy, is um, for you to tell us a little bit about how you got interested in art and what were some of your earliest experiences with art? Trevor speaking. Hey Nancy, really quick before you start, I just want to talk a little bit about our DHH program because we have a lot of DHH students from our program here in Bloomfield Hills that are listening in today. And we're also going to make this available to everybody else in the community, uh, families and students included. Okay. So my name is Trevor Harker and I'm one of the special education supervisors here in Bloomfield Hills. And I also have the honor of overseeing our spectacular deaf and hard of hearing program. Our program is a Oakland County School Center program, which means that we support students from many different districts all over Oakland County, Michigan. I first would like to thank the Detroit Institute of Arts and Deaf Can for bringing this wonderful opportunity to our DHH students and to the students and families from all over. Uh, we all know how important it is to not only bring the arts to life for our students, but also to provide them with role models and experiences that cultivate growth, curiosity, and maybe even with this, help them uncover a new interest or strength that they never knew that they had before. So students from Bloomfield Hill Schools, if you're listening in today um, and you're watching this experience, and those, those of you from the community who are joining us as well, I'm so excited to bring Nancy to you today and this experience that I hope that you will enjoy. Uh, without further ado, we're gonna get started on the interview. And this interview has been created with the help of our DHH students from our DHH program here in Bloomfield Hills. So thank you for joining us today. Megan speaking. All right, thank you, Trevor. Um, okay, Nancy, please tell us about your um, earliest experiences with art and how you got interested in art. Nancy signing. Yes, thank you, Megan. Let's see. My answer starts um, when I was very young, maybe about four or five years old. My parents actually didn't know that I was deaf until I was six. So I became interested in art even before that. Art, in a sense, was my communication. So that was why art was so critical. I was my communication with my parents. After my parents found out that I was deaf, I began to do even more artwork, more and more, and that just kept going. So really, that's also um, how I got interested in art and the early beginnings of it. Trevor speaking. Excellent. Thank you for sharing, Nancy. We now have a question from one of our students over at Eastover Elementary School. And the question is, what was your favorite thing to draw when you were nine years old? <laughs> Nancy signing. Okay, yes, I remember that very well when I was nine years old, actually. My favorite thing to paint were rocks. 
I painted rocks. <laughs> yeah. My parents encouraged me to even sell some of my artwork to start like a little business to be an entrepreneur. So um, I started painting rocks. Um, I made I made some commission on my work um, by selling it and by uh, painting rocks. So that was one of my favorite things. And it was it's a wonderful memory to go back and think about that when I was nine years old. Megan speaking. Hey, thank you, Nancy. That's so I didn't know that about you. That's so interesting. I, I love that. Um, and that's a really nice segue into our uh, next question, which is, um, when did you decide to make art uh, your career? Nancy signing. Hmm. Probably when I was preteens in my adolescent age. My parents had given me, um, you know, so many different kinds of art materials, oil paints, watercolors, so many different materials. And I was very inspired by that to continue doing my artwork. I was motivated to make a variety of pieces. And then they gave me books to read about art, to learn more about famous artists. That really, all of those things combined got me inspired and I just kept going. Megan speaking. Okay, all it's right. Trevor speaking. Um, and we do have a question from another student at Eastover Elementary and it's, when did you start selling your art? Nancy signing. Um, probably about the age of nine, actually, nine <laughs> or 10, right around there. With my parents' help, of course. <laughs> they were helping me out. And that's where I learned about um, budgeting money, um, saving money for future, those, all those good lessons and good experiences from selling my artwork. Trevor and Megan speaking. It's wonderful. That's great. Um, we have a question from a student, another student at Eastover, and it says, other than art, what other things do you like to do? Nancy signing. I like to read. I do like to read a lot. I like watching birds, oh. seeing all those. Uh, going with my binoculars, studying the different birds, bringing books to see what type of bird I'm watching. I do enjoy traveling. I know now it, with the situation that has lessened, I do miss traveling. Trevor signing. Trevor is saying, yep, me too. But yeah, that's about it. Trevor speaking. That's great. And then another question from a student at Bloomfield Hills High School. And the question is um, focused on school. So did you enjoy going to school? And what are some challenge that, chal challenges that you've had um, as a deaf person? And how did you overcome those challenges? Nancy signing. Now that's a very good question. Nancy pauses to think. I didn't really like going to school actually uh, because I was in a hearing class, many hearing classes, and I was the only deaf person. I did not have an interpreter going through school. So that was very difficult in my experience. The things that I didn't understand, I had to just go up and ask the teacher. I just needed to say, please help me. I'm not understanding this. I don't get it. The teacher usually were okay, you know, the teacher would say, okay, well, I'll give you a special project. I'll give you special credit for something else, um, you know, to help me move along with my studies. 
Another part, um, another reason I did like to go uh, to school was the summer program, the summer school. Um, so I had to go, you know, we got to go on field trips every day during that summer school program. And that's what I enjoyed. You know, I enjoyed going um, to the summer school program and field trips, but during the school year, not so much. Trevor speaking. So um, during school, what is one thing that you found the most challenging and how did you overcome that either in, in school or life? Nancy signing. Um, yeah, so wearing my headphones, um, I had to wear that every day and I did not like doing that. It was painful. They were heavy on my head. Uh, it was something that I really had to bear through. I did let the teacher know I don't like using these headphones. I want to take them off. Um, so that was sometimes, you know, something that I had to just work things out. I had to negotiate those challenges, make a complaint, let the teacher know, let my parents know what my experience was. My parents had to also work with the teachers in order to find different ways to solve those problems that were coming up. So most of the time that was pretty successful and we were able to make an agreement. Absolutely. Oh, and also, I went I went to a mainstreamed program. Um, I did not go to a school for the deaf. Just to, just to mention that. Trevor speaking. And from what I hear you saying is that your parents um, helped you to grow independent and self-advocate for yourself. So there's these situations that you came encounter with, and you had to problem solve through those, and you had to figure out how to communicate what you needed and advocate for yourself. So important and something that we really try to work on within our program here. Nancy nods in agreement. Megan speaking. Nancy, thank you. Thank you for sharing, yeah, sharing those experiences with us and, and the students. Um, I'm excited to know about where you are right now. It looks like you're in your studio. Um, would you be able to describe the space around you? What kinds of supplies are around you? And um, what kinds of things do you keep around you to keep your creativity flowing? Nancy signing. Yes, absolutely. I am here in my studio, as you can see. I'll move out of the way so you can see that. This is one of my big paintings. Nancy stands next to artwork that is taller than her. And as you can see, it's pretty big compared to my size. Megan agreeing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nancy signing. So things that I have here are tables. You know, this is just kind of, uh, I, I have my computer here. I have my office things. Uh, this is where I work to get things done. But then I also have painting, um, oil paints here. I can show that to you, move my camera so you can see. Here's a project that I'm working on. It's not finished yet. Nancy turns from the camera to grab supplies. Here are some paint tubes. Mm. Yeah, so this is all where I keep my paint kind of back here in the corner. Okay, in the far back, I have many big canvases that I'm working on. I usually have them kind of hanging up so I can see that. There's sort of different spaces in my studio and I do different work in each place. I have my supplies in the far back. Um, let's see, what else do I have here? I have all of my art books as well over here in a different area. Um, and yeah, that's kind of about, let's see, it's about 10 or 12 feet by 10 feet. So it's almost like a square. And that's my art studio. Trevor begins speaking. So I have a, go ahead. Nancy continues. I also have a lot of good lighting here, which is important in my studio. Trevor speaking. So I'm gonna veer off track. I have a question myself because you have these huge canvases and I'm curious to how long does it take you 
to from the start of your project to the end. Nancy signing. Yeah, sometimes it's about two years actually, because you know, I pause, of course, I don't continue all the time, nonstop. Um, I'll take a pause and then I'll come back to finish it. I would say sometimes three months um, if I weren't to do that. And then let's see, I usually try to make some sort of documentation. Hmm. Oh, and this is for a documentary, a film that I'm doing. So that takes time to to document, to show from the beginning to the end, what is my process? Um, oil. That, so that's an oil painting that I, I'm talking about here. Trevor says, thank you. Megan speaking. Yeah, that's so cool. Thank you for sharing that, Nancy. Um, that's a really nice segue into our next question, which is, uh, what inspires your work? Um, how do you choose what to paint? How do you choose your colors? Why do you choose particular colors? If you could tell us a little bit about, about what inspires you. Nancy signing. Yeah. I get a lot of inspiration from books, books that I read, uh, especially a book called Understanding Deaf Culture. That book has helped me find my identity, really. Um, I actually have a book here. I can show you the copy. Oh. So that's where it begins. I get my painting from the deaf experience. Um, all my paintings are about the deaf experience. And that's what makes me motivated to do the artwork. That's why I get excited. I jump right in to share the experience of the deaf community. And let's see, it has been about 12 years now, um, specifically working on painting the deaf community experience. Let's see, let's talk about colors. Really, the, the colors just kind of come to me. You know, it happens um, that what I paint, the colors that I have, you know, I actually don't like bold colors. And then I decided, you know, I was just gonna limit my colors. I'm gonna limit the number of colors that I use in my artwork and I use five colors. I use black, white, red, yellow, and blue. And that's it, all of my artwork has those five. And it's actually a little bit of a challenge for myself. It's not easy sometimes, um, when you look at the finished piece, you're like, oh, that's easy, but it actually isn't. And so I like that challenge, challenging myself to have something different um, using only those colors. Trevor and Megan respond. So I have Great. a here from one of our preschoolers at our Fox Hills preschool program, and it goes right in hand with colors. They want to know what is your favorite color? Nancy signing. Oh, you know what? I have different shades of red, yellow, and blue. Yeah, those would be my favorite. <laughs> Megan speaking. Yeah, it's really hard to pick one favorite color, isn't it? Nancy smiles and responds. <laughs> exactly. Yep, I agree yeah. completely, Megan. Uh, Megan yeah. speaking. So Nancy, tell us a little bit about like some of the ideas or themes or maybe symbols that you use in your artworks. Nancy signing. Sure. So 
So I do have a lot of symbols and they all have meaning. So you can see this paint, uh, this painting here, there's a horse. For example, there's a horse. Um, there's an elephant. Uh, there's, there's many different symbols in this piece of art. So I call it a motif. And the colors have meanings. The colors of the animals have meanings as well. So for example, red means empowering, power. Yellow means hope. You know, the light, um, the light for the deaf people. Deaf people can do it. They can help each other. Uh, blue represents oppression. Okay. Um, in reference to themes, I do have different themes. Sometimes I focus only on the theme called the dinner table. Uh, the dinner table syndrome. So for example, I might paint uh, myself, me as a little girl with my family and we're talking, chatting, chatting, you know, at the dinner table, but I'm sitting there and none of them are signing. So really what that means is I don't know what they're talking about and I feel left out. So that experience, my own and the deaf community, I would paint that. So that's one kind of theme or motive that I would carry through in my artwork. Sometimes I think about ideas and I kind of put them in the back of my head in order to um, make, you know, different pieces of art. So I have lots of themes, lots of ideas that are kind of there. Nancy's interpreter switches places with a second interpreter. A new voice will now be heard for Nancy's statements. And part of the education, it's part of the education. And what I did, and I did that for a reason. Trevor speaking. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Okay. I do have a question from uh, one of our students at East Hills Middle School. And they want to know what can they do to be better at painting? Nancy clarifies. What did you, can you repeat that question again? What to do better when they're painting? Can you please? They Trevor want to know response. how to become a better painter. What do they need to do to become a better painter to, to um, you know, increase their skill set, things like that. Nancy signing. Oh, okay. All right. The, there's a book that I could read them to, there's a book that I could recommend for them to start reading and practice there using different books that they've studied. Practice every single day and then practice with any types of paints that they don't like, whatever they, or interpreter, whatever you're comfortable with. Have them practice that painting over and over again and get to know your brushes, your brush strokes and which ones you like and which ones you like the best. Do you like the round brushes? Do you like the flat brushes? Sit there and play around with that. And then you'll start to notice improvement. You will be able to get better and better every single time that you practice and continue that practice. And you can see, I do have a lot of different sketchbooks right here. Right here, I mean, look at them, I have oh. one. Nancy shows a tall stack of sketchbooks. Megan replies. That's great. Thank you, Nancy. I have a, a follow-up question about um, uh, some of the uh, things that you show in your paintings. Because um, uh, I know that in a little bit, you're going to talk a little bit about the project that the students will be doing. And I notice in your paintings that oftentimes you use a lot of hands you paint a lot of hands. Um, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that. Why do you, why do you paint hands so often? Nancy signing. Oh yeah, let me get one of my uh, hand paintings. Just one moment, please. Nancy steps away to reveal her studio space filled with sketchbooks, shelving, and paintings of red, blue, and yellow.
Megan speaking. Well, Nancy's gone. We can all take a really nice close look at her studio space. I, oh, she's back. Welcome back, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy signing. I'm sorry. To that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Okay, here's one. I use four hands to create this piece. Hands, I do use hands a lot because my hands are inval invaluable. They're, they're, signing is my way of communication. They are my gateway. And one of the biggest and most important motifs in my paintings are hands and they do represent me that I am deaf. And now with the project that you will all be working on, really it's called a social, social, it's socializing, it's hands. It's with the use, socializing the use of hands. So, it's hands on t overlaid and overlapped on top of other hands. Nancy holds up her painting. You see right here? There's one hand go this way, one hand go this way, another one goes this way. Mm -hmm. And I would suggest begin with two hands. And if you want to challenge yourself, then you can try to add in a third hand and then do the fourth hand. Maybe up to four hands would be the maximum. That would be enough. Nancy holds up her painting again. And the colors, they're wonderful. Megan speaking. Yeah, it's beautiful, Nancy. I can't wait to um, see the work that the students do. And I wanted to say thank you for creating that wonderful video showing the students how to paint. Um, I'm really excited for all of the students to see that video and to see you at work um, and to become inspired by your work. Um, and then at the end of the project, when everybody is done um, with their individual paintings, they put all the paintings together, right? And that kind of makes like a whole mural. So you can kind of see like the whole class as a community and what they've created together. Trevor speaking. I love that idea. And one yeah. have all of the students after they've created uh, these pro or these paintings, we're going to find a place in the district and put them all up. And we'll make sure to send you a picture, Nancy and Megan as well, so that we can put it on the DIA's page. And Nancy, you can you can put it up as well because this is such a great opportunity, a wonderful experience for our kids. Um, I do yeah. have a couple more questions here from some of our students. Mm -hmm. um, are you ready, Nancy? Nancy signing. Sure. Yes, I am. Trevor speaking. Okay. So um, the next question comes from one of our high school students. And the question is, did you play any sports in school or were you included in any clubs? Nancy signing. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was. I did play field hockey. Oh. And I also did do fencing. I did those two sports and that was it. <laughs> and um, club wise, mm -hmm. I wasn't really involved in clubs at all during school. Then yeah, I can't think of any. Um, most of the time I just focused on my art and I really wasn't involved in a lot of clubs after school. Trevor speaking. Uh, the next question comes from one of our students at Eastover Elementary. Uh, do you have any pets and do you like cats or dogs? Nancy signing. Oh, I love both. I love cats and dogs. Uh, my, my I, I do prefer dogs though. <laughs> I am a dog person. I did grow up with dogs and I can't live without a dog. Wow. But right now I'm currently looking for a dog <laughs> because my daughter um, took my dog and the other dog, my other daughter took the other one. So I don't have a dog around currently. So I plan on getting another dog. <laughs> Trevor speaking. You know what type of dog you want? Nancy signing. Um, I, 
I love big dogs and medium sized dogs, like a terrier. I do like those. I I don't like the small toy type of dogs, but I like the medium to, I like a bigger dog. Trevor speaking. You'll have to let us know when you get a dog. Take a picture and send it to us. Oh, <laughs> I will do. <laughs> um, and then one more question here, and it is from one of our students at the preschool level. Uh, what advice would you give, I'm sorry, one of the families at the preschool level, what advice would you give to parents that are still learning sign language or are new to the DHH community? Nancy signing. I would recommend practicing every single day and trying to just pick one new sign anytime. I mean, practice it anytime. Just, you, just learn something new every day, practice. And that's a good way to practice is having like a family, uh, you guys can sit around the family table and make sure that um, your daughter or son is sitting with you and include them and try to work with them on the, developing the new signs. And it does take a lot of practice and it takes a lot of patience as well, but you will be able to pick it up pretty quickly. I think every single day that is most importantly to keep that consistent, but maintain consistency, keep doing that. Don't just give up. And possibly have one mentor, find a mentor somewhere that is deaf. And I would recommend finding a deaf mentor and they'd be able to help you as well. That way that can give you more motivation and they can give you more encouragement to be able to learn the language for your son or daughter. Trevor speaking. That, that's great advice. Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, before we, we move on to Megan, can you show us one more time the, the art project that the students are going to be um, doing within their classrooms and at home? Nancy grabs oh, yeah, the painting. Oh, sure, no problem. It's right here. Megan speaking. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nancy signing. And you can, it, it depends if where on the mural you'd like to put and how you'd like to put it all together. It's your choice. You know, if you'd like to do it, like have it this way horizontally or have the pictures set up vertically to comprise the mural, either way, it'll work. The stu it's students need, so it doesn't matter. Either way is right. And so when you finish putting them all and going the same way, either all vertically or all horizontally, just make sure they're consistent and they're all the same. There's no right or wrong way in which to hang them and to put them together. Okay. Trevor speaking, perfect. Megan speaking. That's great. That's great. Okay. All right. So I am going to uh, talk a little bit about um, visiting the DIA. Um, I hope everybody watching has felt inspired and wants to go see artwork in person after this interview. Um, and then after I talk about that, uh, Trevor is gonna close out with one final question for Nancy for everybody, and then uh, we'll say goodbye. So um, the DIA is open during the pandemic. We have reduced hours and also uh, reduced uh, attendance. So we're only letting in a certain amount of people into the building at a time to keep everyone safe. Um, the DIA is free for anyone who lives in Oakland County. Um, and we're also a very safe place to visit. We require that visitors wear their masks at all times. Um, we have staff at the museum that can tell you about the artworks, but they can also help remind you to stay six feet away from other people who aren't in your group to help keep you safe. Um, and then we also take people's temperature before they come into the museum to make sure that um, before you come into the museum that you're feeling healthy and that you feel good um, to come into the building. Um, in order to visit, you need to reserve a ticket beforehand. Um, so it's really easy. You just go to dia.org and click visit. And once you click visit, it will walk you through the process of getting a free ticket. Um, and you can check out our hours on the website. Um, you can check out, you know, where to park, how to get into the building, all of that. 
And um, I'm really excited for everyone to visit. I am really excited to see the artworks that you create. And I'm also very excited, Nancy, that you were able to join us today and to create this wonderful project for, for the DHH students to um, participate in. And with that, I'll turn it over to Trevor. Nancy smiles, Trevor speaking. Yep, Nancy, thank you so much um, from myself and Bloomfield Hill Schools for helping us put this opportunity out there for our students. Uh, your story, your art, your life experiences, they're truly going to have an impact on everybody who has been watching today. So thank you so much for that. Um, personally, um, I've had nothing but a great, um, a great, great time working with you these last few months on developing and bringing this experience to life. So again, thank you so much uh, for everything that you've done for us. Um, stu students in Bloomfield Hills who are watching today, uh, remember that art painting that Nancy was talking about. Uh, Nancy's recorded a special art tutorial for you uh, to show you step by step on how to create that project yourself, that, that painting yourself. Um, in the end, we're going to collect all of your paintings and your art pieces together and create a mural within this district. And your teacher are gonna is going to receive all of the materials um, and then distribute those materials to both those students who are in person and those students who are at home uh, learning during distance learning, okay? So Nancy, we have one more question before we say our goodbyes today. And that last question is, what advice would you give to our students listening today? Nancy clarifies. Well, what advice, what, for those who are listening, could you repeat the question again? Trevor sure. speaking. What advice would you give to our students who are listening in and participating today? Nancy signing. Um, keep yourself busy. <laughs> make notes. Don't forget. It's really important. I always make notes for everything. <laughs> and uh, carry your sketchbook. If you find an idea, if you have just even one, always carry that sketchbook with you. A small book or something will even work. So you can document it. It's all, I always bring this one with me. If I see something, I draw it. Yeah, that'd be my piece of advice. Trevor speaking. That's great. And going back to our discussion today, you also pointed out how important it is to self-advocate. Um, so that's something that I, I took away from this, um, this opportunity to meet with you today and have this interview is how important it is for our students to learn to self-advocate. So thank you for that. Nancy signing. Oh, sure. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Megan speaking. All right, Nancy, thank you so much for inspiring all of us. And um, we'll share what the students create with you. And um, I really hope that everybody has a, a good day. And I look forward to seeing everybody's creativity at work. Everyone says their goodbyes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me here today. I really I appreciate it and I've enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Video ends.